Ah, uh, the age-old question of what the top six rarest shinies in the teal mask are. It's a question that keeps me up at night. Almost as often as questions like, can 16 Wii's find more shinies than sandwiches, or how many DDR mats are too many to shiny hunt with? Well, I hope to know the answer to all these questions someday. Today, we can lay at least one of them to rest. Join me as we head over to Kitakami and try to figure out what the rarest shiny Pokemon are. My name is Professor Rex, certified professor of Pokemon and someone who found a shiny three-segmented Dunsparce in way under 300 evolves. And this is the Professor's Lab. Number six. To start off strong, we have a Pokemon that has almost always been difficult to find, the ugly fish Pokemon Feebas. Feebas is known for spawning in locations that are hard to track down, and the Teal Mask makes no exception. Finding Feebas in Kitakami requires a keen eye. I struggled to find the entrance to its hidden pools, and I knew what I was looking for. A casual player might miss it altogether. Honestly, I just love how Game Freak kept up the tradition of hiding Feebas away somewhere. If you found it all on your own, let me know in the comments, because I'll be kind of impressed. Once you manage to make your way into the pools hidden deep inside Oni Mountain, you're still going to have a tough time finding a shiny one. Since Wishcash and Barboach also spawn in these pools, it's impossible to use sandwiches to isolate for Feebas. With a water and counter power sandwich, you might expect to only see 30 to 40 Feebas per sandwich, meaning you could be stuck swimming back and forth for quite a few hours before finding the ever so slightly less ugly purple Feebas. If you're ever lucky enough to find a Feebas outbreak, be sure to take advantage of the opportunity to track down this rare Pokemon shiny form much easier than you'd ever be able to otherwise. Number 5. Next on the list, we have a Pokemon that's pretty easy to miss. Literally. Cutie Fly is absolutely tiny. Even though its shift from yellow to pink doesn't make it a subtle shiny, managing to track one of these down isn't going to be an easy task. But then again, if you're considering any of the Pokemon in this video, I imagine you're looking for a challenge. Luckily, there are a few tricks we can employ to make this hunt a little easier. The most obvious one is to not even bother looking for the shiny colors at all, and just auto battle everyone you find using let's go mode until your Pokemon decides it couldn't hurt a shiny fly. If you haven't finished the story mode in Kitakami, you can give yourself another edge by progressing to a point where the time is locked to morning or day. Since Cutie Fly won't spawn at dusk or night, if you're able to keep the sun up all the time, you won't need to worry about moving your clock around to keep the spawns coming. Since Cutie Fly spawns alongside Ralts or other bug types in most of its range, I personally recommend trying out a fairy sandwich right near where you enter Kitakami to narrow down the spawn pool. After all, they do say you'll catch more flies with tomatoes than with vinegar. If you really want to challenge yourself on this one, trying for a shiny teensy cutie fly would not only strain your eyes a tad more, but also result in one of the smallest shiny Pokemon of all time, which you might be able to add on as a little achievement. Number 4. This next Pokemon is certainly not going to be anywhere close to being the smallest. The sleepy Snorlax in the Timeless Woods is big enough to block the entire entrance to this cave. Despite the fact that Game Freak has shiny locked most of the overworld encounters like this and given us access to only the normal forms of Okie Dogie, Pheasantipity, Monkey Dory, Ogre Pond, and even the Blood Moon or Saluna, this Snorlax can be shiny hunted. In fact, Poison Pink over on Twitter has already managed to track one down, albeit a little accidentally. There isn't too much that makes this Snorlax special, especially since Munchlax spawns on top of the cliffs nearby at lower levels. But if you want a wild Snorlax caught in the timeless woods, this will be the only way you can do it. This Snorlax is what we call a fixed symbol spawn, so there's no way to boost its shiny rates. Your shiny charm and sandwiches will be completely useless for this hunt, and you'll have to do resets at the full odds of 1 in 4096. Since the Snorlax that spawns is stored in memory, you can't just run away from it to try and reroll. The best way to hunt it is to knock it out, save just outside of its spawn radius, skip a day, and do full resets running over to the cave each time to check if the Snorlax has spawned as a slightly different color. 
Luckily, there isn't a limit to how many of these you can catch, so don't worry if you've already caught it before. You should be able to find a new one guarding the cave each day. Speaking of sleeping, let's make sure we don't sleep on today's sponsor. Has this ever happened to you? Aw oh, man, I can't watch content from more than one region. Hey you. Huh? Yeah, you. Have you tried the Professor Rex YouTube channel? It has content covering multiple regions, including Kanto, Hoenn, Ore, Sinnoh, Paldea, and now even Kitakami. You won't have to worry about watching content from a single region any longer. Oh, wow. Subscribe now to be the first to see the currently in production feature length video diving into the most interesting shiny hunts in every main series game. Now that's a lot of regions. Number three. The last time we dove into the rarest shiny hunts in Scarlet and Violet, we talked about some of the interesting raids that could be found across Paldea. Luckily, Kitakami has delivered us with a few more that might be worth keeping your eyes out for. If we look at the Pokemon that spawn in raid dens in Kitakami, there are a few that can be caught with moves they wouldn't usually have yet. To clarify why I think these raids are cool, I should note that yes, you can definitely get these moves as early as level 1 through breeding, however, you can't pass down Master Balls through breeding, so it might seem a tad pedantic, but if you find one of these shiny raids and catch them with a Master Ball, you've locked in something that isn't possible anywhere else in the game. Personally, my favorites from Kitakami are the level 45 Carbink that comes with Moonblast a whole 10 levels early, and of course, is a freaking amazing shiny. And I also love how powerful a level 20 Feebas with Flail would end up being. Of course, trying for these hunts comes with a major downside. The types of raids you can find depend on how many gym badges you have. If you want to try for the Feebas, you'll need to make a new game with just a few gym badges to optimize your chances of finding it. Though, honestly, the fact you can't get some of these Pokemon at all once the credits roll might be enough to count them as just a tad rarer. Since raid dens don't care about your shiny charm or your sparkling sandwiches, all of these Pokemon are full 1 in 4,103 shinies. With how long it takes to run from one den to another and load into the raids, this is no easy task. You'll probably stumble across far more shiny Pokemon in between crystals than you'll manage to find as actual Terra raid shiny Pokemon. Even if the raid shiny you find doesn't come with some weird early move, be sure to treasure it, because it's certainly one of the rarest in Kitakami. Number 2 Now, Terra raids aren't the only Terra Pokémon that can be found in Kitakami. The Crystal Pool offers Terra energy to some of the wild Pokémon around Kitakami too. There's a counterfeit Poltergeist that can be found as a glowing aura over on the east side of the region, and a whole bunch more that can be found elsewhere. Of all the Terra Pokemon, only a few have moves they wouldn't be able to have at that level usually. Vullaby, Akamoo, and Vikavolt. Vullaby has a a full 14 levels early. However, if you take a Vullaby over to Galar, it's actually possible to use a TM to teach it a tract, and then use the home move relearner to keep it when it comes back over to Scarlet and Violet. Akamoo is able to learn Noble Roar one level early, but Jangmoo actually learns Noble Roar at level 36, meaning this one's kind of out too. That just leaves Vikavolt. First off, this shiny is freaking sick. I might need to shiny hunt one for myself. When we look at its moves, the wild Terra Vikavolt has Zap Cannon 23 levels early. Zap Cannon hasn't been a TM since Generation 2, so that's not going to change anything, and Neither of its pre-evolutions can learn it at all. This Zap Cannon Vikavolt is certainly something special. Just like any other Wild Terra Pokemon, you can't boost the odds with a Shiny Charm or a Sandwich. So if you want to secure the Pokemon taking the silver spot on this list, head over to the northeast of Kitakami and be prepared to spend a long time opening and closing the game. Number 1. Pouring its way into the number 1 slot is the friends we make along the way. Friendship really is- nah nah nah. I'm just busting your Pokeballs. The rarest Pokemon in Kitakami is Artisan Poltergeist. <gasps> That's it! 
I'm sure most of you were expecting this. It It's literally the thumbnail after all. But let's dive into why this Pokemon might not be as rare as you think, and then get really weird about how we can still make it the rarest out there. Right off the bat, let's figure out what Artisan Poltergeist is. There are two variants of this newly discovered Pokemon, the far more common Counterfeit Poltergeist and the rare Artisan Poltergeist, which sports this tiny little stamp on the bottom of its pot. Poltergeist will spawn in the bamboo forests on Revelers Road and Mossville Confluence, and despite what some people will try to tell you, the odds of finding one of these little artisan pots is 1 in 20. A big change from the 1 in 31 odds of Antique Sinistee near Alfernada. Luckily, unlike the weird phony-only locations that appeared in Paldea, everywhere that Poltergeist spawns, the artisan form will be nestled in with them. But speaking of Sinistee, the 2.0.1 update to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has brought about one massive change. The last time we looked at the rarest Pokemon in these games, I was the first person to report on the fact that outbreaks were massively broken. That meant no droopy Tatsugiri outbreaks, no Blaze or Aqua Breed Tauros, and no authentic Sinistee. That's been changed. Outbreaks will now spawn specific forms of Pokemon. That even goes as far as to include own tempo Rockruff and, yes, authentic Sinistee. But what does this all mean for Poltergeist? If you weren't already aware, it means you can find outbreaks of artisan form Poltergeist and completely ignore the whole 1 in 20 rarity. Plus, the Poltergeist outbreaks that spawn are just as likely to be counterfeit as they are to be artisan. I was lucky enough to find one the day the DLC dropped, and as you can see, every single Poltergeist I caught was the artisan form. Over the next 24 hours, I was able to get a full team of 6 shiny artisan Poltergeists. Wait. No. Wait. Wait. Ah! There we go. Okay, well. Oh! Shiny! Oh, what? What the heck? Though honestly, the shiny can be crazy difficult to see, and since you can't really just use the let's go method on outbreaks, I decided to use another trick to make them a little easier to notice. By boosting up the saturation on my TV, the dark green parts of Shiny Poltergeist becomes much more visible. The cost you have to pay is that everything else becomes a little deep fried. Shiny! Shiny, shiny, shiny! So, if all you have to do is look for an outbreak, what makes this the number one rarest on the list? To answer that, let's get pedantic. First off, we can't breed to get Artisan Poltergeists. That means we have to find them in the wild. When things like that happen, I always want to know what the lowest level they can be found at is. All six of the shiny Poltergeists I found were pretty high level. That's because the levels of the Pokemon in Kitakami are massively boosted if you head over there after the credits roll. But what if you head into Kitakami earlier in the game? Personally, I was pretty curious about this, so I set up a second switch by speedrunning all the titans, moving a full living dex in through home to grab the shiny charm, and flew over to Kitakami. I was pretty disappointed at first. There weren't any Pokemon to be found at levels lower than they could evolve. Even Pokemon like Annihilate were one level above the level Primeape learns Rage Fist. That's kind of besides the point though because there was still something else I wanted to see. What is the lowest possible level for Artisan Poltergeist? Currently, Cerebi would have you believe it's 7. But that's not quite right. Each spawn point in the game has a minimum and maximum level for the Pokemon it can spawn. If you head over to Mossfell Confluence before completing the game, you'll find Poltergeists ranging from levels 19 to 25. And if you look for Poltergeist over on Revelers Road, they can range from levels 13 to 16. So the lowest possible level artisan Poltergeist you can find is level 13. The problem is, there's far more species of Pokemon that can spawn in the bamboo forests on Revelers Road than in the Mossfell Confluence. This makes the Artisan Outbreaks over on Revelers Road over twice as rare. You can boost the odds of finding one by standing in a bamboo forest and using a Ghost Encounter Power Sandwich, but you'll probably still have to date skip quite a bit to find the right outbreak. Once you find the outbreak, if you haven't completed the DLC, you can make your hunt a tad easier by progressing to a portion of the story that keeps it permanently daytime. This'll help a bit, because Poltergeist spawns will stop at dusk. 
If it's always daytime, you won't need to worry about losing a few minutes for every day-night cycle. So, with all that said, I believe that a shiny level 13 Artisan Poltergeist is the rarest Pokemon in the Teal Mask DLC. Just like with Cutie Fly, if you really want to challenge yourself, go for one with a teensy mark or something a little extra. If you've already gone ahead and shiny hunted Poltergeist, I'd love to know what ball you caught it in. I'm probably going to put mine in a desk ball when I find it. If you'd like to watch me hunt it live, click the link in the description below to follow the Professor's Lab over on Twitch. Before you go though, is there something you think I missed? Is there a Pokemon that should have been on this list? Either way, if you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe, because we're going to have two more just like it coming out soon. First, we're going to take a look at the Indigo Disc, and then we're going to do a full retrospective top 10 of the entire game. If you like this video, check out this one where I tried to shiny race 16 GameCubes against Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The question is, can my army of consoles stand up against the power of a sparkling level 3 sandwich?